So welcome everybody. Welcome to the Hot Song podcast. Today is Leap Year Day, yeah. <laughs> February 29th. So we only have uh, February 29th every four, fourth year. So February 29th, 2024. The main topic this evening is clearing ancestral enslavement. And it, this is this is still a continuation of all the work that we've been doing for the, the, the past couple of weeks. This is the continuation. So actually, before we we begin, I um because I know the last couple of of weeks, um I did not get a chance to do a presence meditation. So I thought, okay, let's let's start this week. By doing that first, just a few minutes to for everybody to get present because we have our life, and sometimes our, our life is very busy. So let's just give ourselves a few minutes to just quiet down, bring all of our attention and intention back to this moment. So let's just do that. Let's just take in a deep breath. So breathe in through your nose. And let it all go. Breathe in deeply again through your nose. And let it all go. Do one more big cleansing breath. Just breathe in deeply. And then breathe out completely as well. And after that, just continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for your body. As you breathe in and out, really focus on making sure that you're not just breathing with your chest. Breathe in as deeply as possible. So what do I mean by that is allow your lungs and your whole body to inflate as you breathe in, which a lot of the times during the day, we are too distracted by other things to do that. And that's why when we do that, when we just breathe in deeply as much as we can, and then breathe out as well, it is really sending a signal to our body that Hey, body, something is shifting. Let's do that shift. Let's just let go of all of the, the, the things that we get caught up in during the day. Let's take a break by using our breath, by utilizing our breath as well to allow us to communicate with our body, to let our body know that it is time now to come back to the body. Whatever has been distracting you during the day, whether it is work, family, or other things, in this moment, choose to focus on yourself. Focus on your body. Be with your body. Love your body. Be absolutely attentive to your body. And allow your body to relax as much as you possibly can. And wherever it is that you feel there is still some tension in your body, just 
send an intention to that part of your body that is still experiencing some tightness that it is okay to relax now. It's okay to let go. It's okay to come all the way back into the body. And also call all of your attention back to yourself. This is time for you and your body to strengthen the communication. Human beings, we are such social animals. We put our attention out into the world for a lot of reasons. And sometimes we need to recharge. And one of the ways to recharge is to call back all of your attention to yourself and put yourself, put your body to be first here and now. And really allow yourself to feel that you are most important in this moment. Let yourself be the most important focal point for you in this moment. Tune your attention into you, into your body. Until you really feel that you have a good rapport, a good connection with your body again. And when you feel that, then you can just take another deep breath in again. Let it all go and come all the way back into the room and open your eyes if you have closed them before. So welcome back, everybody. Let me just actually get my um get my notes notes up so I'm not missing anything. Um okay, great. So just um just a very quick recap of what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. So about three weeks ago I started doing um clearing. There are all sorts of different um, ancestral clearings because we have a lot of stuck energies in our body that is from this lifetime and previous lifetimes from this generation and also from previous ancestral generations as well being passed down through the DNA to us. And so I have, um, I think we've gone through clearing male and female um, disconnection. We've gone through clearing some of the body and mind disconnection and also a disconnection from nature. Because we think that, okay, we are human beings. We are, we are the cream of the crop and the rest of the animal kingdom is just, um, it's our plaything. Um, but actually, no, we actually are part of nature. 
and also I've talked about our relationship with money. There's a lot of programming that we have um, inherited from our lineage about money, what money is, how we should um, treat money, how what money um, can or cannot do for us, all of those things. So, so we've cleared some stuff. And then last week I talked about some um, ways that we can actually work with the body because all of these blockages or programming is actually being hosted by the body. So yeah, we, I can clear all of these things energetically. However, if you still feel it in the body, that means that you actually energetically, you're still linked to it. So another layer of clearing is really doing some body work to clear the rest out. And some of the body work is has to do with moving, just movement is very as a, a very good way of moving energy. So moving, but it's not just moving. It's also moving intentionally. So when you think, oh, okay, I, I feel that I have this um, program and you just ask your body, so where is it being held in the body? It could be intestine, it could be liver. So it depends. So when you, when you kind of get that message, then you um, really intentionally move your body in such a way that allows you to move that part of your body so that the energy that's being stuck in there can start to find a way to unstuck itself. And other ways that we can work with the body is actually using vibration. So vibration could be um, toning. And then also it could be music as well. So it could be singing, it could be toning, or it could be standing in front of a big gong, like an instrument that's big enough and can create the, the, the vibration that is powerful enough to assist our body in moving energy quickly. So all of those are different body works that we can do to assist our body to really let go of any stuck energy that is still being hosted by the body. And so this week, um, the, the idea is to talk about clearing ancestral enslavement. So um, what is what do I mean by enslavement? I, I know, um, well, <laughs> I don't know, but I've heard that. I don't know whether some of you have heard that too, is that, you know, um, planet Earth is a prison planet and that our soul has been trapped so that we keep um, coming back. We, we, we can't leave the, this plane. We keep coming back. We keep being tricked into reincarnating here. So that's how our soul is being trapped here. So all of those things um, that has to do with being somehow being enslaved here. So, and um, that's what I am kind of referring to. What do I mean by clearing the ancestral enslavement is that like all of the things that we have been um, clearing in the previous like male and female disconnection that actually is a part of the ancestral enslavement we not well the female has been um, I would say systematically down or, or kept down very systematically um, if you look at some of the um, older older laws like um i think i'm not sure whether it is um all of earth but i do know that in some countries even to this day 
or maybe in some tribes even to this day is the the female the females within the tribe cannot inherit anything from the family so if there is a uh, any inheritance if there's any money or land or other things that's within the, the the family when your parents die it goes to the son and if this, there's no son then it actually goes to the the um, closest male relative it does not go to the daughters if they have any daughters and it's like to this day this is something that is still happening in maybe not very widespread however that idea is not something that is just recent it has been there for a long time and that is not the case um throughout all of our human history. There are points, there are parts of the, the time where female is actually, um, it's more of a matriarchal um, society where female are the people that inherits the, the, the wealth in the family. And, and so that's, there's this um, dynamic where either one, either male or the female are um, considered higher than the others. So, and then this is one disconnection. I, th I think that really contributed to the disconnection between male and female because there is that um, power in imbalance that's within relationship. And that's something that is engineered. It's not natural. It's is definitely when you observe nature, that is not the case. Nature is much more egalitarian. There are some uh, functions the, the feminine or the, the, the female would do. And then there are other things that the, the male part of the species would do. So they, in nature, the um this these kind of things are more divided it really depends on the environment depends on the species and when something that you can observe in human society but it doesn't it's not mimic it's not mimic by nature then you know that there is a distortion there so and that's part of the um enslavement I would say mentality that that's been passed down for many, many, many generations. Not something that just happened a hundred years ago or even two hundred years ago. It's been with us for as long as we can remember. And then there is, um, and not saying that only the female is being squashed. The males are being squashed as well. How, um, for example, there are some members of society that is much higher. So the class system. And even to this day, if you just look at um, some, some place like the, the, the UK, the class system is still there. You can still see it. You can still feel it. The class system is if you're not of the a certain class, then you're being looked down on. And that's something that is um, still happening today. And I remember listening to um, Trevor Noah, who talks about the apartheid that is being practiced within South Africa, um, or parts of, I don't know whether it's whole of South Africa or parts of South Africa, but there is, but it's something that is very um, the so social engineering and why it's that they 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 have a system of um differentiating you know so it's not just you know whether you are this color or that color is if you are let's say 10 percent of a certain color you are considered better or worse and then if you are 20 percent, then you are, are better or worse so there is just so many ways of dividing people and and that is 
um, really that's how even the male members of society is being squashed down. So there is this different class that is being promoted or demoted depending on what the um the powers of that the, the the powers to that that are for that part of the the, the world think that is best for their um, to sustain their own interests. So there's that going on as well. It's and then um there is the suppression of the body because knowledge, the mind, thinking has been elevated for, well, I wouldn't say a millennium, but at least the last you know, couple hundred of years, um, we've been so obsessed with what the mind can do. We think that, okay, when you, um, I, I think philosopher, I forgot who it was, that says, I think, therefore I am. So this is really something that is, a lot of people resonated with this. We think that, you know, it's because we can think that's why we are the, we are, um, we are the higher echelon of the, the, the food chain. So that gives us the right to kill other animals or kill other people that are less intelligent than us. Uh, and if not outright kill them, at least treat them badly. So there is this differentiating of the mind, the mind being put on a pedestal. And as though we, we think that the mind can think, well, actually, yeah, there are some thinking, but most of the time, the mind um, is more of a receiver rather than a thinking um apparatus let's say so it's and that's something that has been promoted that our thinking as is something that has been promoted so that we can disconnect ourselves from the body because the body is just there to look good it's just there so that we can fit in whereas the mind the mind is what elevates us is how we can get out of the the if we want to climb the social ladder then it's the mind that helps us climb it it's not the body but no it is actually ridiculous because you know there is no mind without the body so it's it's but this kind of thinking is really um the mind playing games and all of this is actually something that was engineered to enslave us. To, well, enslave may not be the best word for it. It is not like we, um, it's to try to keep us in a certain frame of mind so that we don't um, we don't even know that there is something beyond because what we don't know we don't look for so all of these um, all of these programs or these games is really to distract us so that we don't look beyond what is physical so and we don't look beyond what um would help us survive because a lot of the 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 disconnection is being put in place because of survival so and so the first first enslavement is that there is lack so this is brilliant engineering of that you know there is lack we don't have enough because there are so many on so many of us that we don't have enough and that game is still being played today we're still being convinced that there are like there are eight billion people on this planet the planet cannot sustain eight billion or nine billion so god forbid we have 10 billions which is funny because um if we actually know how to manage 
our resources, if we weren't so driven to consume, we can probably, the, the earth itself probably can sustain way more people than is um, currently here a couple of times even. So this idea that you know, there's not enough, there's lack, is an engineered idea. It's not a real idea. And all of these, um, I would say, feelings of insecurity or unworthy, if you look at nature, you know, would a bird ever think that, oh, I'm not good enough to eat from that blueberry tree. No, that does not happen. But human beings believe that, oh, I'm not good enough to make a living or make a certain amount of money. That is totally an engineered belief. So, um, and because we are so cut off from nature that we, we think we are better than nature, we don't observe nature anymore. So we actually disconnect it from what is normal. What is normal? Normal is that there is abundance in nature. There is so, there's so much abundance. And we, um, we've been conditioned to believe that there is lack. And so when we believe that there is lack, we will create it ourselves. It's um, a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the, the, the first engineering is that there is lack. And then why is that potent? Because if we don't have enough, then we're going to die. So it's fear, fear of death or fear of something that will eventually kill us. So fear is um, another invention that keeps us in the box because because of fear then we won't try to do things out of the box because when you go to adventures when you go outside the box yeah you might die yep you might die very true but how is that um a bad thing because we've been conditioned that we are this body like and this body is vulnerable and yeah the body is vulnerable a lot of things can happen to the body but we are not just the body we are so much more than the body and that is the part that is um kept from us that's why most of the people they're atheists they don't believe in god and and all of that why it's all of that is to make sure that we don't latch on to the idea that we are more than this physicality. So when we know that we are much more than this physicality, that we actually created this body. If we can create this body, we can create another body. And so, yep, we may not have this body because this body may die and most likely will die one day and nobody knows when. However, um, we create another one anyways. So that is the, the, that is what I mean by enslavement is all of these fear of death, lack, all of these um, tactics kept us in, kept us um, make sure that, you know, we don't try new things because when we try new things, we might find out that we actually can go outside the box. And if we go outside the box, then we are free. We cannot be controlled or at least not controlled easily. And if then, if we can't control, if we cannot be controlled easily, then, you know, the, uh, people that likes control have to work much harder and they don't like to work that hard they want us to work hard but not them to work hard so that's why they try to convince us that we're this little being 
and we only have this life, we only have this much. And if we don't try to um, like work within all of this box, then we're going to die. And so that's how we are being enslaved. So questions, comments so far? I notice there are no arguments. No, there are there are some exceptions even in the past, mm -hmm. uh, like in the for when uh, it was the Persian Empire, the women actually did business. And yep. uh, yeah. they, they, are. they were allowed, like they were respected. Yep. There were exceptions. Yep. I think yep. even in India, because of all the different gods and goddesses that they have there there was women power there it's only when the british came they took away that you know they made this caste system mm -hmm. put the separation bigger and bigger yep over time you would think that you know over time as we get more civilized that it should get better i know <laughs> <laughs> it went the opposite way and recently, I feel like people are not even thinking. They're just behaving like automatic robots. Like there's no common sense in people. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The, the other night, I canceled my ride because I was getting a ride. So I, I canceled it online, and it was half an hour more. So I said, okay, I, just to make sure, I called Wheeltrans also. And I told mm -hmm. the lady, and she said, okay, that's fine. And then can I talk to you about travel training? Oh, my God. I said, please, I've had enough of that subject. She's saying, oh, you're so rude. <laughs> I said, like, I'm calling you. I didn't even have to call you. I'm calling you so that because I'm thinking I don't want the driver to come all the way and then find out, you know, by the time the information trickles down. It, they, they, I've seen it happen. So I don't want the driver to come. So make sure that the driver knows. And she's going on on this other spiel. They hired some new people and they think that we don't know. We have to listen to it every recording that they put you on hold every time. Travel training, travel training. What do they think that how did we manage before we got sick? Like we didn't use the public service? Oh, it just boils my blood. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, um, For those people who um, um, are not interested in moving up to the uh, the next timeline, the, the 5D timeline, yeah, they are going downhill. Sometimes uh, I think it plays havoc in our memory too. <laughs> like this morning, I was I wear uh, tights and then I wear my pants. <laughs> I came out to wear my boots and then I realized I didn't put on my pants yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is actually a symptom. It's a symptom. Because when we've been lied to and um, the truth has been denied. So why why are they telling us all these things? Why are they telling us that, you know, there's lack, there is, yeah. you know, you're not good enough. Um, you're not born in the, the, the right, uh, the, the right, at the right, um, in the right household, at the right time or right place. Well, it's like, all of these are not just lies. Yeah. Um, consciousness is a certain frequency. The more you put lies over it, the more you confuse or con um, and just disperse the, the the frequency. The more chaos get in, and it get to the uh, a point where people you know, they just give up. Why bother thinking anymore? Because you know they are so distracted by all of these different layers of lies get to the point where the, the consciousness just give up. 
so if they and so that's why at some point um when when a person gets um El uh, alzheimer they losing the memory all that they mm -hmm. actually regress they regress they they can't even help themselves anymore and mentally, when you keep lying and you keep telling them things that are not true in their face, like even though you know there are so many truths out there, but if you if a person consciously choose to take in the lie, it gets to a point where you know, yeah, their consciousness just go on Alzheimer. <laughs> okay, you don't want to know the truth, just you know, just so they no longer can think clearly anymore they're just a hunk of meat they give up like yeah yep yeah this is this is this is what happens when you don't honor the truth when you keep lying when you keep lying over and over and then yeah it will get to the point where your consciousness just checks out and yeah, we we're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of this. Yeah. Um, not just in old people, young people as well. You know, because young people are so confused. And young people that that come in, they actually came in at a higher frequency. However, if they um come in with uh, parents, if their parents because they even though they may be very rebellious, but you know, they still, at uh, the archetypally, their parents is still um, authority figure. When an authority figure tells you that, okay, white is black and black is white, and they keep doing this to the young people, at some point they just, they just check out, like mentally check out, not, not physically check out. But they just, whatever. They don't even want to compute this anymore. So that is happening. And um, that's why it's so important to be authentic to, you may not have to go and you know tell your truth to everyone else. You may not have to do that. However, you still have to tell yourself what is true. So... Tell yourself what is true and know that, okay, I know that they are saying this totally wrong. And I know what the truth is. However, I still need to live or I still need to, you know, X, Y, Z. Then, so I am going along with that. And you have to find your way to um, be non-confrontational and still honor yourself. So that's, it's um, a key period of time for people that are awake. Not seeing even it as easy. You, yeah, even when you tell people, they think that we are far out. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't want to they, believe it. It's impossible. That's why don't to... don't tell people. Yeah, don't yeah. tell people. Your no, job like, is not to convince them. Yeah, your job is to know what is true for you. Yeah, and no, live just... your life the way that you that is best for you yeah. and um if somebody asks you hey this is going on what do you have to say about it if they ask you then yeah then no, just tell them it is there whether they believe it or not but at first yeah, just tell them we're having a discussion of, yeah, and have, then no, have, have no um I don't push it on whether they they believe it or not just just tell them well you know what, this is what I know, believe it or not, and just leave it at that. So, but don't try to say, okay, you're wrong. This is this is what is right. And if you do that, then you are no, you're you're exposing that. yourself. Because no, I... people, if when, when somebody is not ready to know the truth, they will, not. they will attack you when you try to force them to know the truth. So, why? I just tell them if you want, you can look it up. There are places where you can get the truth, even online. <laughs> look it up. You don't have to believe what I'm saying. <laughs> just look it up for yourself. Yeah, you'll find it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that is what's going on. So, so it's good to have groups like this. So at least we have, we know that we are not alone. Like we have like-minded people thinking yeah. like us. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was sharing some information with a woman um, that I know in the pool and she has her Christian filter. Anything I tell her, it has to pass through that. So she's just not open at all. I was like, okay. And I said, sort of, I sort of said, oh, yeah, maybe God wants us to learn this. Mm -hmm. You know, even the Christian God is the same God, right? Maybe God wants us to become aware. But I left it at that because she has a filter. Nothing's going to get in except, uh, you know, if it doesn't meet that filter, it's not getting in. Yeah. So don't take it personally. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, no, that that is that is their beliefs. So their life, you can't right. live it for them. So let them um live it. Right. If they ask you, then you share. And if they don't, let it be. Right. And Cornelius runs into blocks like that. He he can tell tell people. He he can actually heal them on the spot, but they'll still not believe. <laughs> it's not that he's healing them; he's it's listening to their consciousness, and he knows to tell them differently. But they will still say, "Oh, yeah, it's just woo woo," like <laughs> for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are not ready to be healed, so that's their journey. And okay, so any other comments? Any questions? Okay, so now let me shift gear. Let me shift gear. I'm I'm bringing all this up not to make you feel bad at all. That's totally not my um, intention. I want you all to know that you know all of these enslavement programming blah 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 it's not something that is done to us it's not something that is being forced on us we actually agreed to it not not me not in this body agreed to it however um the human collective eons ago um at least 10 12000 years ago agree to go through the cycle of being completely disconnected from our consciousness or our, our um, divinity, I should say. It's not just consciousness because our consciousness is actually an aspect of the universal creator. So in other words, we are an aspect of God. I'm not saying me personally is a God. I'm just saying that we all collectively, all does not mean that it's just planet Earth. It's actually all of creation collectively is God. So God is this all-inclusive uh, all inclusive being. And we are just an aspect of it. And all of these, I don't know how many, trillions upon trillions of creations is all part of one so there is and there is only one but this one creator is so powerful that it splits itself into many many variations and and a collection of that variations and aspects of god that is on a part of what we call earth decided that, okay, we're going to go through this. Why? Because we want to experience it. We want to experience this disconnection, total or near total disconnection from um, our God-like or creator-like um, essence. So we 
I wouldn't say we asked for it, but somebody suggested or uh, some being suggested and then say, hey, beautiful earth being. We have this um, deluxe model of experience that, you know, you guys, if you're brave enough, you can have. And the 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 being that is the, the human collective at the time decided, hey, we've never tried that. So let's let's try that. Let's do that. And so we all agreed to it a long time ago. That's way above my pay grade. Agreed to it. And so now we are at this this um this time where this all of this is kind of coming to a completion so we are in this scripting of all of this that's why it looks a little crazy outside right now because you know <laughs> we're near the end of the show and that's when you know it gets really interesting and um so that's what i the next thing that I want to, to mention is that, yep, we've been dumbed down, we've been disconnected, we've been enslaved. But not because we are or somehow we've been duped or somehow we've been in, you know, there's any black magic or anything like that. No, it's something that we agreed to experience. And now that we've come to the decision that enough is enough, we've really learned a lot, we've really experienced a lot, and it's time for us to shift the game. And so when the human collective decided that, then things shift into gear. And we are at this moment where we are... Um, getting to the end of this experiment so so how do we assist ourselves in shaking off all of these enslavement blah 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 all of that stuff so that is really more of what I want to get into in the um the second second part of this uh, any questions comments so far Real quick, um, there's a theory. Well, there's a theory that God wanted to experience Himself, so He created the playground, and we keep going through cycle. We keep experiencing this, and um, it, it's in, in other words, what can I say? Um, we all wanted to do it, but it was God that wanted to experience himself. And it's going to keep going, evolving. It's going to keep changing. I mean, um, anyway, that's what I wanted to share. Yeah. I guess you can say that. Um, as I mentioned, um, I, I, I really want to point out one thing is that God is not something outside. We are actually a part. There's nothing outside of us. It's actually, it's within us. And I think that's something that, you know, people from the, um, more traditional or orthodox um, religion um, may have a harder time um, getting out of that box because the the idea is that you know God is some some being outside you know high up high above beyond and that's not the case. I I agree. Yeah, it's it's. Well, we are an aspect of God. Not in this body, we are not God, but we have a linkage and we have access 
to that mm. part of us that is an aspect of the creator God. Right. And to know that just that, just that little bit of linkage is already enough. Mm. It's already enough. Mm -hmm. It's not that we have to have, you know, everyone um, completely in sync, then, you know, we can, we can win. No. We just have to be in sync with that little bit, that, that linkage that we have within us. And that's already more than enough to shift everything. Mm -hmm. I, I actually want to um, bring out a point is that, you know, genetically, if you look, um, this is something that, you know, scientifically is, is proven is that a chimpanzee, the difference between a chimpanzee and a human being genetically, um, there's only about 1.2% that is different and all the rest, you know, more than 99% or almost 99% of the genetic material between chimpanzee and human being is the same. It's that one, just more than 1% that is different, that makes all the difference. It's not the percentage. Like if you look at the percentage, we are basically <laughs> a chimpanzee or a monkey or whatever. And, and so, but you know, it's, it's the one percent that we can measure with the knowledge and the the technology that we have now. But if you look at um, what we cannot measure, that is way beyond. You know that, yeah. There is the chimpanzee was created to have a certain experience. Human being was created very differently for a different kind of experience. And the body may be 99% the same, but it's that one, just over 1% difference that made all the difference. And if you want to go from where, let's say if I want to go from where I am to go to, where do I want to go to? Let's say Ireland. So if I want to go to Ireland, if I'm even 1% off course, if, if the plane that I got on or a boat that I got on, whatever vessel that I used to, to take me there, if it's only one degree off from where I want to go from the starting point, I'm quite sure I won't get to Ireland. I might get to somewhere that is close to Ireland but I won't get to Ireland. So yeah, it's just over 1%, but there's a big difference in that over 1%. So don't, um, don't downplay that 1% of difference. There's the 1% of difference that makes all the difference. And so when we want to um, shift ourselves, shift wherever it is that you may find yourself in, whatever state you may find yourself in. And just know that you don't have to shift yourself from where you are to 100% to where you want to be. You just have to shift yourself 1%. And that already makes big difference. Wow. Amazing message. Thank you. Yeah. And and so if you think of, well, we've, we've been through so many generations of enslavement and, you know, you're not good enough. How many generations ago we were told not good enough and we're still being repeatedly, um, you know, reflected back to us that we're not good enough. And you think, oh, okay, try to get to the point where we can reclaim that creator being that we actually are. And we think that, okay, yeah, we, it's going to take us a thousand years to get back there. No, it's not. 
we don't have to shift 100%. We just have to shift this 1%. So just concentrate on shifting yourself this one little bit each day. And that result is going to accumulate. So that is that is how we can totally get out of this enslavement mentality and go back to who we truly are as a creator and be able to be completely in control with our own experience. Just work on that 1%. And so what may that 1% be? Um, I just want to make some suggestion for you all because I don't want to talk too, too much more. Um, I want to spend more time to just actually doing a, an energy work to, so that we can assist all of you to shift more um, energetically so that you can you can ground that in your body. However, the things that you can do is, um, for myself, there is, I remember I've done all the, the, the work and, you know, I don't know how many workshops, how many classes, how many initiations I've been to. And I'm still like, I, I remember just recently as in earlier this year. So this is, this is the end of February. So let's say January 1st. I was still feeling this um, life. Like when I feel in my body, I still feel the sucks. <laughs> it shouldn't, but the sucks. <laughs> I am not enjoying myself. And I know that I should be enjoying myself. And I'm just wrecking my brain to say, what the heck? What does it take? What does it take? And um, so what did it take? I remember what actually shifted for me at one point was like, I was, this, this is like a few, few years ago, at least five, six years ago now. I remember um, I was just at a point where, you know, I wouldn't say I want to kill myself, but I'm really not enjoying life at that time. Um, and and I'm actually enjoying life a fair bit. I'm not 100% there, but I'm enjoying it a lot more now. But five, six years ago, I was like really struggling. I know that, you know, I have, I have a mission to do, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. And so what I did was, um, because, you know, in my mind, there's this, this, um, recording this as you're not good enough. Who do you think you are? You know what to do. What do you want to do? You know, you know, just just give it up. You, there's nothing you can do. You you are just you know you're only good enough for this. You you're not. You can't do all of those things. And so this this um, soundtrack was in my mind. So what I did was um, I just took um, one off. I, I think I've shared this story with you guys already before, is I just took um, uh, Franco's um, I Am Love meditation, and I just looped it on my MP3, and um, and I just put it on all night. So I just, all night, whether I'm asleep or awake, I would just put it on. And um, so even when I'm sleeping, there's this I Am Love meditation that is keep going in my mind and it did help it really did help and so what I suggest or and and I've been doing this myself as well is when I feel that you know uh, I just don't feel this this joy in my body is I really take the time to um, one of my meditation practice now is to really take the time to be with my body and imagine what being happy in my body feels like and really do that. And um, I'm not saying I'm completely shifted, but I, I did notice that there is a difference. I feel it's much easier for me to feel that joy 
or I, I whenever I'm carrying all, all sorts of um, the groceries and I'm just chucking along um, and not having a good time, I rem remind myself, you know what, what you're feeling, all this you think of as drudgery, but this is kind of part of what being alive is about. And um, what I have previously labeled as being hard, as being work, you know, so hard, life is just so hard, is wow, this is what it feels like to be in this body when I'm carrying all these um, groceries, when, when I have all these things going on, you know, think of how tasty they're going to get the, that, you know, that um, bag of apples is going to be so juicy and crisp when I bite into it. So, but before that, I have to take it home. So, um, and really know to start to, I would say, reframe my mind. Every time I feel that I'm drudging along, this grunge work, this life is hard, I would remind myself, you know what? If you want to reap the rewards, you have to do some work. Yeah. So, and reframe my mind. And that's, somehow it's made a difference and also um when when I think of okay I'm a woman I'm of a certain age you know what am I good for I'm just uh, the best thing that can happen to me is you know my kids one of my kids will have kids so that I can you know enjoy being grandma but you know what I have I have so much more to offer and um, and that women being, yeah, instead of thinking that, well, okay, it's because um, the, the, the woman give, gave Adam the, the apple. That is why, you know, women were being cursed to feel pain when they give birth and blah, 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 all that. And really turn it around and say, you know what? <laughs> A woman has so much that we can actually, uh, has so much creative power that we can actually create a human being, a new human being, a new body into this world. We can actually hold the um, creative frequency for nine months or however long it takes for a new being to come through. We are so blessed. We have so much creative power, way more than you know, some other people can can possibly do. I know they are they are they are also this they're having um these um pictures of men being pregnant as well. It was like <laughs> yes. Let's see that. Let's see how um, how the men are going to fare when they have to um, push a an actual baby through their I don't know how their 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 physiology is going to do that, but you know, let's say that they can actually have enough surgery and whatever constructive surgery that they can actually do that. Let's see how they like that. I I really. <laughs> I'm so happy to be able to see that. And so that this is going to be fun. And um, so every time you think of, you know, women's work as being denigrated, just know that, you know, whenever you, a person, or, or I notice that whenever I dislike somebody is usually because I'm jealous. Is because I'm jealous of them. That's why I would think, of, oh, okay. I would pick. I would think of something to pick on them. They're not good enough, or they didn't say that. Um, this is very truly enough for me. Blah blah blah. But you know what? <laughs> Cut the bullshit. When it comes down to it, it's because somehow, on some level, I feel that I'm, you know, I'm not good enough. I feel threatened. That's why I'm trying to. 
think of something that's bad about them. So when people are trying to put women down, it's because on some level, they know how awesome we are. And that's why they're just trying so hard to push us down. And so, you know, let go of the 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 victim part of it and really get to know and to realize the awesomeness factor that we have. That's why they have to try so hard to push us down because we're just awesome. So every time you catch yourself thinking in a negative way, it's really get at what is behind it and find a way to reframe yourself. And when you do that enough, you start to train your body. You start to train your body to not fall into that victim mentality. So that is how we can start to shift that energy and to facilitate the shifting of the energy. And like even we, if we don't do anything, I just want to let you know that the 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 high intensity of the frequency that is coming in now is actually facilitating everyone to do that naturally anyways. However, if you're up for it, you actually do some extra work so that you can actually get ahead of the, the, the curve and be able to get it out of your body even faster than what the, um, the universe is co-creating with us. So that's all I want to say for this evening. And um, I'm just asking for any uh, feedback, questions before I, we go on to the next portion. I was thinking, good thing there was no men around today. <laughs> but, he, but even for men, I think they know. They know, like, um, yes, women has been pressed down. So are the men. They didn't escape unscathed. They did not. They their role is so diminished. They they actually could have been so much more powerful. So they have been um suppressed a lot as well. Suppressed differently. They they have to um they are, they are suppressed differently, but absolutely suppressed as well. No, they have to pretend to be strong always. Yep. And it's not easy because there's a lot of pressure. And again, it's the parents who put that pressure on the child. You know, being a boy, you have to be more outgoing and sporty. And... Yep. Not easy being boy either i don't <laughs> i always think that you know oh thank goodness i'm a woman thank uh, goodness i'm a girl <laughs> i don't know how the men does it because <laughs> i can't do it yeah i you know i like uh, i like a nice dress i mean not always wear a dress but you know i do like a nice dress yeah. so I enjoy doing a lot of the things that, um, like, I enjoy being a woman. I always wanted a girl so I could dress her up pretty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not that boys also cannot be smart. I mean, I, I, this, I brought some clothes from India for my grandson. Mm-hmm. So, sounds like you're all good then. Okay, great. 